Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about installing Kali Linux on a Linode virtual server. I talked to you about this a couple weeks ago, but didn't go in depth with it. Uh, so I wanted to make a video to show you how to create your own and talk about why maybe you would do this. Before I get into that, just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. Really appreciate it. If you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button on this video. So like I said today, we're going to talk about installing Kali Linux on Linode, which you can see I have the Linode website pulled up here. If you have not already signed up with Linode, I'll have a link down in the description, completely up to you whether you use it or not. This video isn't sponsored by them, but I do uh, participate in their referral program, which if you sign up using that link would give you a $100 60-day credit, so why not, you know? And I don't really get anything if you sign up and use that credit. I don't get anything unless you actually spend money on their platform. So again, completely up to you. Take advantage of some free money. You can test this out and all the other apps and, you know, possible things that you could do with Linode for completely free. So anyways, enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So once you've set up your account and you've signed in, you should come to a dashboard that looks similar to this. And you can see here that under deploy an app, you can see Kali here. You may not see that, and maybe it's just my account, but if you don't see that, you can just click on create Linode here. And what you're going to want to do is go to the marketplace. And this is where they have all their, their kind of pre-built uh, scripts or apps uh, that will build a virtual machine for you and install all the necessary stuff for whichever one of these that you choose. And today we're going to be choosing Kali Linux. And one thing I want to point out is this little information icon. You're probably going to want to click on that whenever you install any of these apps because you can get some additional information. So we'll go ahead and open up this guide here. And this guide kind of walks you through what I'm going to be talking to you about. And uh, what we're going to be doing is installing Kali Linux with the full desktop experience. You do have an option down here uh, to install a headless package. So maybe you don't need the desktop experience. But we're going to be doing that for this video, so that way I can show you how VNC works through an SSH tunnel, which is something you might want to do here. So you're going to click on Kali Linux, and then here you're going to need to designate what user. You're going to create a user that will connect through VNC, so you want to give a username here, and you're also going to want to give a password here, which I'm going to update because I'm not sure what it's putting in there. So put in a password there. You're probably going to want to make this secure if you plan on leaving this online. For me, I'm just going to be showing you this for the purposes of the video and then removing it. Uh, because originally I had one of these running and I was using it for penetration testing of my own home network. So from the, from the outside, trying to see how secure my router setup was and things like that. Much easier to do on a machine that is outside of your network rather than using a machine that's inside your network and then maybe connect them to a hotspot on your phone and and doing it that way this is a little simpler so again we're going to be doing the everything package which is going to include the desktop environment we don't want to do the headless package you can if you want we do want to set up vnc so make sure this is on yes we're not going to be doing any kind of ssh public key for this and we want to disable root access over SSH. You're probably going to want to do that if you plan on leaving this online, but I'll just keep it there for now. And then the API token, really this is only if you plan on pointing a domain at it, which we're not going to be doing here, along with these next few options as well, are all related to that, and we're not going to be doing that here. The image is already pre-selected for us as Kali Linux. We want to choose a region that is close. Uh, I'll choose Chicago. I'm not in Chicago, but it's probably the closest out of that list. And here, if you read the document uh, that was linked above uh, when we clicked on that information icon, they suggest that you do the 4 gigabyte dedicated or the 4 gigabyte uh, shared CPU, which is what we're going to be doing. It's $24 a month. So if you use that link, you'd be able to do this completely free for two months. And we'll keep moving on down here. We're not going to add any tags. Let's remove that. And our root password. Put that in here. 
we're not going to be doing any SSH keys. So that should be pretty much it. We're not going to be doing a VLAN or any type of advanced networking here. We don't need backups and we don't need a private IP address. So once you have everything filled out here and you have everything the way that you would like it, go ahead and click on Create Linode. Ah, our password is not complex enough. Try that one. Click on Create Linode. And there we go. So now what you're going to see is the building screen and this screen is kind of like your dashboard for this particular virtual machine or virtual server. Right now it's provisioning, which means that it's kind of allocating the CPU and RAM. It's, it's really building the, uh, the virtual server on their end and it'll go through a few different things. Uh, it'll go, I think to building and then it'll go to running and when it's in running, oh, it's booting, not building, sorry. Uh, once it goes into running, we'll be able to open up the console and see what exactly is happening because this will take a while uh, since we aren't just setting up a standard virtual machine like a Ubuntu server, which would, would come up pretty quickly. Um, this is actually going to be installing Kali Linux and all the tools, etc. So it will take a little while. From my experience, it's been around half an hour or so, but you can monitor it through the console and you'll get a message telling you that the installation is completed and you'll typically see a login prompt and then you know at that point you can move forward with your SSH connection and uh, getting into VNC so you can actually see the desktop. So let's go ahead and pull up the console here. So we can see right now that it's currently downloading uh, the software and everything. So you want to let this run for a while, uh, like I said, 30 minutes, and check back. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and pick back up when this is complete so we can go ahead and move forward with connecting to that VNC session and getting to the Kali Linux desktop. All right, so mine is finished setting up uh, the console here. You can see it's spinning. I've had some issues with it lately. Maybe you'll have the same issue, maybe not. Another way that you can tell when it is done is going to be the stats that appear uh, back here. They won't appear while it's setting up, but once it's finished, you'll see these boxes pop up, and that's another way to know that it's it's ready to go. So at this point, we can go ahead and create our SSH tunnel in order to connect to the VNC session to see the actual Kali Linux desktop. So how we do that is we're going to want to bring up a terminal <clears throat> and clear this out. We're going to want to uh, paste in a command here, and this command actually comes from the guide, and I'll have it down in the description uh, as well. And let me make this bigger so that you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to copy and paste this in. And essentially what's happening here is we're creating a tunnel from the local port 61,000 uh, to the remote port 5901 on the actual Linode server. And with this command, we'll need to change out the username here with our username that we created for VNC when we set up the Linode. And then we'll also need to put in the uh, IP address of our Linode, which you can see uh, here right at the top of the screen here. You'll see that on your dashboard there. So we'll go ahead and hit enter to make that connection. We'll have to put in our password. And you may see a message about a, a fingerprint for like the first time that you connect to it. Just say yes to that. And then you won't see that again. And then you should get your password prompt after that. And once you type in the password, it's going to look like nothing happened. But actually, we the tunnel is open now. So now we can use a VNC tool in order to connect to that session. And for me, I like to use Ramina. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it or not, but Ramina is pretty easy to use. What you're going to need to do is click the little add button at the top. I will move this where you can see. Uh, you'll click the add button at the top to add a new session, and you're going to want to choose the Ramina VNC plugin, and you'll put in the um, the IP address 127.0.0.1, which is the local host. And then colon 61,000, that's the port that we are using on our local device 
in order to get into that tunnel to the VNC session. You also need to put in the username here, so that way you don't have to type it in each time. You can also put in the password to prevent having to type it in each time. So we'll go ahead and zoom back out here, and we'll make this connection. And see, it's asking for the password, and that's because I didn't add it into the session already. And here we are at our Kali Linux desktop. If you are familiar with Kali Linux, one thing that you'll notice when you connect to this is that when you go to applications, you don't have all the typical folders that have all the tools organized for you. And how you fix that is, is you're going to want to open up a terminal. And let me move this to the center of the screen and make it a little bigger for you so it's easier to see what I'm doing. And the command that you're going to want to run is sudo apt install kali-desktop-xfce. And you're going to put in your password there. And we'll say yes, so we want to install all that. And then you'll go ahead and wait for this to finish installing. Once this finishes, you will get kicked out of the VNC session and you're just going to want to reconnect to that. So we'll wait for this to finish here and we'll see that I get disconnected and uh, we'll go ahead and reconnect and then we'll have all of our folders there in the applications drop down. So the applications are almost finished installing. You may see this because a new kernel was installed and what you want to do here is just hit enter and then you want to hit tab to get down to the OK button and just hit OK and there we go, we were disconnected. So now we will reconnect, same way we did the first time. You don't need to reopen the tunnel because it's still actually connected. And you can see that here in the, the terminal that this session is still connected. So you always have to have that tunnel created. So every time you want to remote into this Kali Linux desktop, then you're going to need to make sure to do that SSH tunnel first in order for the VNC session to work. You could still SSH into the Kali Linux and use everything from a command line without the tunnel. It's the tunnel's purpose is just for the VNC connection. So now up here at the top left under applications, we can click on this and now we see we get all the categorized uh, application list here, which is exactly what you would see if you installed Kali Linux on your own hardware at home. So now you have a fully installed Kali Linux instance on Linode that you can use to do different types of penetration testing. Of course, you're probably not going to be doing anything with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth because this is a virtual server and it's not going to have those devices attached to it. But it's still very useful for penetration testing of your home network, uh, web work, like maybe you're wanting to check the um, security of different websites or you're wanting to enumerate like uh, hidden directories and hidden files that may be hosted on a website, different stuff like that and everything else that Kali Linux can do. I'm in no way a Kali Linux expert. My use of it is actually pretty basic. Um, but anyways, so there you go. If you want to set this up again, there's a link down in the description if you want to get that free credit and... Um, that's all I got for you today. I hope everybody has a great weekend and I'll see you next time.